And now I'd like to turn to Earl Hackett. Uh, Earl, I, I can't thank you enough for doing what you're doing, Earl, uh, because I hear all different kinds of uh, questions about 3D printing and can you do this or how you do that. And taking us through the step-by-step -step like you're doing on the show, I think is uh, really great. So thank you so much for, uh, for doing this. Last week we talked about uh, making, uh, using CAD systems and such, uh, went over a few of them. So we're gonna take my little peach crate model and we're going to actually build this as a, uh, uh, set it up for 3D printing, we're gonna put it together, put it on the build plate and export it. Um, one of the things you need to, when, you, when we're going through this, one of the things you have to recognize is that I'm gonna be using what we call layers. And this is probably the most important part of a tool in the CAD for model building because you could put, you have multiple layers and some, some of my models have maybe 15 or 20, 30 layers sometimes. Uh, you could take pieces, put it on a layer and you turn the layer off and it goes away and you can, you don't see it anymore. It makes it very easy to take a complicated model and uh, keep the pieces of it simple. Um, well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to build the basic components of the crate. And one of the things is uh, I, I, these are these are really made out, made out of really junk lumber. It was really terrible stuff. And so I'm going to make random width boards just so that you see crates, cracks between them. Uh, we'll build the crate sides, the crate frame, which was the heavier structure that held the whole thing together. And then we'll do a little uh, video on actually how we put these together. For random with boards, I figured, well, a board about, there were 10 boards on the long side and eight boards on the uh, short side. When you, when you run the numbers, uh, about uh, something about 1.2 millimeters was about the right size for these 10 boards. And so to, I, I made, took it down from 1.2 down to about 0.9 millimeters. And we just, we just drew a line and uh, chopped off the ends. And then each of these lines we used to, build a little rectangle, which became uh, the board, as we showed you uh, last week. You can see here, we've, we've I've just got a bunch of boards. We put them together and lay them up on the uh, outline of the uh, uh, crate. And you can see there's different gaps in between them. I probably should have made these boards a little narrower so I had more gaps, but eh, it's what I got. Um, and I, I used a number random number generated to determine what board goes on next. So, because I, I'm not very good at doing random stuff. Um, took one of the walls, just put it down at the bottom. This blue thing, we took one wall, rolled, rolled it down and extended it out. And that became the bottom of the crate. And that becomes part of the, uh, the crate bottom. And that little, that bottom became part of the structure. This is structures, it's two by four structure, it goes all around. And uh, some two by fours down here. And this is, I was amazed. I did this in scale lumber. This is an HO, I just built this thing. So these dog on boards are uh, 0.4 millimeters thick, which is just a little over one inch. Uh, the guys at the club were amazed at how fine the, we, I could print these things. But anyway, this is, this crate, this is this uh, brown portion here, will go on a separate layer, separate from the uh, uh, paneling. Now there's a problem with this, and I didn't realize it when I was drawing it up, but there is a problem, and it's called a non-manifold edge. There are two problems in making models. One is a naked edge, and the other is a non-manifold edge. And the non-manifold edge is right here, right there. What happens? This board here and this board here are the same size and the two edges lined up like this. And when those two edges are shown in a STL program or STL model file, it doesn't know what to do with them. It goes nuts. And so they say, you, you know, shut you down. You can't, you, there's two ways to correct this. One is to extend this board out a little bit. So this, this edge and the other edge are different. it would be happy with that. But the proper way to do it well, here, here, here's, what an, here's what an STL file looks like. It's, they take your surfaces and they turn them into a bunch of triangles. Because when you want to know where, when the computer wants to know where 
a surface starts and a surface, a, a, vo a volume starts and a volume ends. It shoots a line along one of the axes. It comes through here and it's easy to calculate where that line intersects a triangle. So the, your model is reduced to all this big pile of triangles here. So it goes through it. And when it comes out the other side, it says, ah, I'm done with, the tri uh, done with that surface. So it knows where the surface is. That's basically what a, a, an SDL file is. But the problem you have is that right there, it doesn't know where these things are hooked to. Uh, it just gets very confused and very unhappy. So the way to correct it, the proper way to correct it is to open this thing up. I took the end cap off this one. I trimmed, used this wall here and trimmed this wall back. So it's, they come together to form a corner. And then you take this surface here and extend it over to the other one. And so you now have a proper corner and there's no confusion. This is the other thing you can't have. This is, these are what they call naked edges. They're not connected to anything. In a solid model, you cannot have these things because it just, it just goes absolutely nuts. So the, the naked edges and non-manifold edges, they're the things that are verboten. Close it up like that. And now we're gonna assemble the crates. Now, one of the things I have, I've, I'm using four levels here. Uh, the crate, it's the horizontal, the brown one, the brown stiffeners and the bottom slats, that's on one layer. The walls are the combination of the vertical slats. I have a la little layer 01, which is red index marks that help me position the walls. And the default layer is where the finished crates are gonna go. Um, there are a couple of things you wanna watch here. One is co what's called copy in place. It duplicates an object for use in another layer. In other words, you bring the layer up, you, you expose it, say copy in place, and then you make it go away again. So now you have a copy of that object in exactly the same spot every time. And you also use the object properties, which determines what layer the things are on and turn layers on and off. So this is the, this is the little video and here we go. I'm gonna try and keep up with it. This shows the layers, layer controls and this is the property controls. And I'm turning on the crate I've turned on the uh, wall sections. Now, what I've done here, I've highlighted the crate. I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna copy it in place right there. Okay, come back. And I'm gonna put that one that's highlighted now as part of the default layer. We'll go back up here. We're gonna turn off the crate layer. This is now, the, that's the default. That's on the default layer. That's what's gonna be produced. Going to go over, I'm going to turn on my little red marks. And there's four of them, one at each corner. And those marks line up with these marks on the walls or the panels, the wall panels. It lets me position them very quickly and easily. So I'll highlight it, it's going to copy it. And all these are going to be copying moves. So you copy it from that point, stick it on that point. Pick another one, copy it, and grab the other point, the bottom point. He goes over there. We'll do the same thing on the other two sides. Copy and position it. Copy, position it. Now we're gonna take, going to turn that, the little red points off. We're gonna highlight the whole thing. We're gonna group it so it's one, one becomes one piece. So I'll make it, put it all in default layer first. Now it's grouped and we're gonna move it out of the way. And then we're gonna cl click another one. We need to just start over and do it again. Boom, there it is. And we're, so after you get them all made, we're gonna position them on the build plate. This white line indicates the uh, region of the, the, the area that I can print on. So you just take all these crates that I made and just start positioning them. And you get them all positioned. And now we're ready to export it. That's what they look like sitting on the build plate. Highlight the whole business. You come over to the menu, 
export selected. I'm going to export the selected ones. Now we just select your file type. And we'll find the STL file, which is right there. Select STL. And I happen to have, I'm going to replace that file there. So I just select that. We're just going to write over it. Boom. So yeah, right over it. And there's some, just use the defaults. I've never, I, I have no idea what these things do. I just use the defaults every time. So it's been exploited and it's out there. It's ready to go into the printer. And next time we will actually print the darn thing.